yo. Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Eddie Johnson again. We back. Happy New Year. I know we just the 20th now, but <laughs> hey, Happy New Year. It's out. This is the first episode of the new year. So um it would be wrong for me not to wish you all a happy new year. So yeah, happy new year, y'all. Um hope this is a blessed year for you guys. And I hope the Lord really reveals himself to you in this year. Um, I believe that the Lord is gonna do a lot of that this year and making himself known to a lot of you all, a lot of people all over the over the world. So, um, yeah, man, I just really pray that you guys really get to hear from the Lord, you know, really understand who he is and, and what his will truly is. So with that being said, um, <clears throat> this is, man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a bad job with, with memorizing episodes, but it's the next episode. It's the latest episode, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, this episode is, I was actually, <clears throat> the reason why it, it took a while for me to record uh, this episode, you know, from the start of the new year is, be, or st- the start of the last episode, um, is because I like to really, um, really hear from the Lord and seek the Lord and what it is I'm, that I'm supposed to speak on. And I think for like the last couple of weeks, I didn't really know what that was. So and instead of me just putting anything out there, I decided to wait, you know, be sure, um, be sure of what, what God wanted me to say. <clears throat> so, um, I, th- I think, oh yeah, I was, I was on Instagram one day and, you know, I, I see a lot of posts, um, you know, just like, I guess uh, just things going on in the world and in the country and stuff like that. And you, every now and then you see people say, man, everyone needs to find Jesus. Everyone needs to find Jesus. And so I'm like, hmm, a lot of people say that, but, you know, the, the for those that don't know that or don't know who Christ is yet, like, you know, what if they see that and be like, okay, how do I do that? Right. Um, you know, how do I get to really know who Christ is and, and really have a, a, a real relationship with him? And really know who God is and know what God's will is. And so then in church this past weekend, it was kind of like a confirmation for me uh, on what it is that I, that this this episode would be about. And um, really, it's about it's it's about that, you know, um, how how do we enter into the kingdom? Like, what are the requirements Excuse me, in order for us to really enter into the kingdom, especially because, you know, we're in the last days where we're living during the time of revelation and um, we need to know we need to know how to how to uh, receive receive the kingdom of heaven. Right. Um, when you think back to the the Old Testament or I'll say not in the Old Testament, but uh, the first coming when Jesus first came. Um, it was the religious people that had him killed, and um, that 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 makes you question: like, how is it that the religious people, those that claim to believe in God, how do they not know that this was the one that was spoken of by the prophets in the Old Testament? You know, the, this was the one that their forefathers, their their ancestors, had been waiting on. You know, and a lot of it has to do with the leadership at that time, you know, the people, the, the teachers and, and the Pharisees and teachers of the law, um, they they themselves didn't know who Christ was. Or maybe they did, but they, you know, had so much power and so much a nobility that they didn't really want to relinquish that to Christ, you know, even though, I mean, whether you want to or not, he's the king of kings and Lord of Lords. So none of that matters whether you want to or not. He's going to have that that seat anyway. But, you know, maybe because they thought that they could have, um, maybe they thought that they could have a say and, you know, really, you know, usurp his authority and his stature, his name. And so they decided to speak against him. So, 
And that's really why I like to um, talk about really ha making sure that you have the truth, you know, because in Revelation chapter seven, it talks about um, the four winds being held back. So that represents judgment. The angels holding the four winds back and, and not hurting the earth and the sea and the trees. And that is representative of people. So, uh, and, and the sea also represents the world. So um, really, and, and again, I, I, I spoke of this in a previous episode about knowing the parables because that's what you need to know is if you want to understand Revelation. We have to understand, and really, if you want to understand the whole Bible and and understand, you know, the, all the parables that Jesus spoke on concerning the kingdom of heaven, because it was all spoken in parables, and that was actually prophesied as well that he would only speak in parables concerning the kingdom. And so, um, you know, and, and and it talks about you know the angels holding the four winds back, um, you know, just so that the God's people can be sealed. And the question is, okay, well, what is God's seal? Because and also in Revelation, you talk about the mark of the beast. So it's the mark of the beast, and then there's God's seal. So again, you know, throughout time, it's always been God versus the devil. And God's seal is God's word. Um, and also we see in John chapter 1 how in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And, and later on in the chapter, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And the word is Jesus Christ. So uh, if we're talking about God's seal and God's seal being the word, that means we need Jesus Christ. We need to know who he is and, and what he's done. Uh, in fact, we need to, and what he says in John chapter six, is that we need to eat his uh, flesh and drink his blood. And, you know, maybe to someone that just is, is not thinking, obviously he's not saying to act physically, eat his flesh and drink his blood, especially for us today. I mean, he said this around 2000 years ago. So how will we be able to eat? You know what I mean? So um, that means we need to really receive his words and understand his words and digest his words and make his words become a part of us. You know, the saying is you are what you eat. So when you eat the word, when you drink the blood, you become that. And in order to uh, and also, we have to understand that, you know, Jesus had God's seed. And and that also goes to um, in Matthew, Matthew, which I think it was Matthew chapter 23. Um, was it chapter 23? No, 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 I'm sorry. It was, no, Matthew chapter 13. So this is Jesus talking. This is uh, chapter 13, verse 24. It says, another parable put he forth unto them, he being Jesus, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares or the weeds also. So the servants of the household of the householder came and said unto him, sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The, th the servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in fields to bury them. But gather the wheat into my barn. So, Again, um, it, it, it's, it's always been a battle between God and the devil, God and Satan. And this field right here is representative of Jesus' field. So you would say the body of Christ. But the enemy came and put his own agents of chaos, if you will, to sow, um, see, to sow his seed, which would be lies. You know, Satan is the father of lies and, you know, that when he lies, he speaks of his own because that's all he knows how to do. He can't tell the truth, right? So the 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 enemy came and put his you know put his his agents of chaos and gave them his seed or or the lies you know these false doctrines and false teachings and put them inside the body of believers. And so now you know in in I, I spoke of it in Revelation chapter seven how the angels held back the the judgment because you know. God, God wanted to give, say, give us time to understand the truth and, and receive the truth and be born again, right? To receive his seed so that we could be of him because 
um, this is, I can't remember the scripture, the, the, the scripture reference, but there's scripture where it says it gives you a list of who will not inherit the kingdom, neither fornicators nor idolaters, uh, nor effeminate, you know, and, and the list goes on, right? And it says they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, when you think in a in a physical sense, you know that's you know, in the physical sense, who who gets an inheritance, you know, from their parents? It would be right. It would be the child. The child will get an inherit an inherit inheritance. But if you're not a child, you can't you you won't receive that inheritance because you're not a child. You're not you know you're not a child of that person. So if you don't have God's seed, if you're not seen as his child, you know, if you haven't partaken of uh Jesus' blood and his body, then you want you're you're not you're not a child, so you can't receive that inheritance. And uh that was really the 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 lesson in church this past Sunday was about Passover. So believe it or not, you know, we are supposed to celebrate Passover and it's not, you know, what you would think is Passover, but it's really representative of what God has done. This is God's work. You know, God has allowed us to pass over from death to life by way of Jesus' blood. So you think when when the Israelites were leaving Egypt, right? But you know, the last plague when God had the the first one, you know, killed. If you know, it, it was if you don't have the blood on your post, your firstborn will be killed, right? And so if you didn't have that blood, your firstborn will be killed. And so the blood is representative of salvation. Because if you, if the if the angel of death came and saw the blood on the doorpost, he passed over, right? He passed over and went to the next house to see if the blood was on that post. So Jesus' blood represents salvation, you know. So if we don't have if we don't have Jesus' blood, meaning we don't have uh, His Word and what He's done, and and if we haven't digested who He is and what He's done to allow us salvation, then we won't be able to receive the kingdom. We we won't be considered as the Bible says co-heirs with Christ. We won't be able to receive that inheritance of the kingdom, right? And um, if we, you know, when when we understand what Passover is, then we would, you know, more so celebrate that because it's a, it's like a humbling thing where we know where God has taken us out of. You know, God has taken us out of the world of lies and, and even in the church, more so in the church, um, taking us out of, these false teachings and, and and hearing these false pastors preach and, and do all these things contrary to what God says in his word. Um, when we understand, you know, that, you know, when we really come to realize that and, and know that God has called us out and we've answered that call and we've came out, we can truly appreciate. That's why we celebrate these feasts. That's why we celebrate, especially Passover, knowing where God has taken us out of. Number one, you know, say we were never believers, period. But, you know, God has, you know, allowed us to understand the sacrifice that, that Jesus made and, you know, that God has given his son to die for us, you know. And then when we understand that, you know, we we are to be harvested and brought really to him, to to his word, then we can understand, you know, and, and appreciate more the work that God has done and really how much love that 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 is to do all of that for us to give us that love and and by giving us his son you know um you know i, I um oh that's what i want to say and you know saying that you know um coming out of these these churches and coming from these you know out from under these false doctrines and these false pastors um i'm sure some of you guys have heard and i've i've, I've mentioned his name previously um this pastor, and I put it, I put pastor in quotes, uh, this pastor named Mike Todd. He's very popular, you know, within, you know, my generation, um, I guess because, you know, most, most, you know, the younger generation or, or kids, uh, you know, for the older people that would say, like to be entertained, you know, they didn't, a lot of, a lot of, you know, people in my generation didn't like the, the old way of how church used to go, you know, it was very formal, you know, you had to, you know, you had to do things the right way. You know, there was a way that you wanted to present yourself to the Lord, you know, even by down to your, to your attire, even though, you know, the Bible, you know, you, you are to come as you are. Right. Um, but now, you know, you have these, these new pastors that, you know, dress like, you know, anybody off the street would, you know, if you're into fashion, they into, they into high fashion, stuff like that. Not saying that there's anything bad with that, but, you know, 
when when that's really what you're known for, and you're not if you're not known for giving the truth and and preaching the gospel, then that's a problem. So, anyways, this guy Mike Todd, he um, I think he, I guess you could say he was kind of like going over the um the story of when Jesus spit in the in the clay and wiped it on the man's eyes, and the man he was blind. When Jesus wiped the clay on his eyes, he became he got he got his sight back. So Mike Todd called himself, I guess kind of trying to um you know bring home a point by making by doing that exact demonstration and literally spitting in his hand and rubbing it on another man's face number one why would the man let him do that but i heard that it was supposed to be his brother or something like that but who cares brother or not why would you let another man another person period put spit on your eyes just for uh demonstration's sake <laughs> you know, like, honestly, the word interprets itself. You know, if if the word, you know, the word has its own power. You don't need to add nothing on it. You don't need to put no sprinkles on top of it because it doesn't need it. It's good on its own. You know what I mean? So, and that's what I mean, you know, by we, like now, especially now, you know, again, we're, we're living in the last days. We need to have discernment to understand who these people are. You know, um, yeah, it may seem like they're preaching from the word, but we have to get, you know, hear everything in context. You know, we have to understand that scripture is scripture. And, you know, there's a scripture, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, um, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope in the future. And a lot of times, and even though we are to, you know, we are supposed to put ourselves in scripture, like, you know, kind of like to see where we are, where we measure up according to scripture. And if we need improvement, you know, and stuff like that. But a lot of times people use that just for themselves and not realizing the whole, sto there's a whole story behind that scripture. And there's a point behind that because Jeremiah was commissioned by the Lord to go and prophesy to the people, you know, to, to the Israelites and, you know, that he was afraid, but God was reassuring him that he would be okay. You know, that his end was, was beautiful at the end. You know, he was just to do what God told him to do. So, you know, these pastors do these, um, not experiments, but these demonstrations to bring a point home when that's really not the point of it, you know? So again, you know, we have to have discernment to understand who is, is preaching the truth and who isn't, you know, um, and there's, that's another, again, talking about Passover and about salvation, that is what we need to pass over from, pass over from, ba from Babylon, really, from those false teachings and uh, from those doctrines of devils, as scripture says, and we need to pass over into life. You know, we need to pass over to receive directly from the Lord and from the one that that, that he has um, sent, you know, sent to to testify to us about. And that's in Revelation as well. So. Um, I just wanted to go over um, just a, a couple more scriptures. This is in John chapter six, um, just to kind of um, understand further, um, you know, how, you know, we need to, how we need to be, you know, and the things that we need to do. Right. So again, just to kind of, you know, do like a little history lesson, a little rundown um, of Passover and of salvation. So, you know, the serpent, the seed, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And so since they sinned, you know, they did exactly, they did the opposite of what God told them to do. God couldn't be there. So he had to leave. But God still had a plan to have his creation to himself. Right. So after Adam and Eve came, the, you know, came um, the flood and then Noah came and then one of Noah's children sinned. And that further, because, you know, this was salvation, uh, the ark, that was representative of salvation, you know, of God giving people a chance, you know, because Noah testified to these people, get in the ark, you know, it's, it's going to, there's going to be a big flood, you know, that's God's judgment, basically. So you need to get on this ark if you want to be saved. People didn't, so they were left behind. You know, they didn't listen to the one that God commissioned to say these things, right? So after Noah, you know, his, his son sinned. And that brought back sin into 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 the world. So after Noah came Abraham, and Abraham was po promised to be a father of many nations. And then after that came Moses. And Moses, this is when the Passover started, or you know, this is the time of the Passover. Um, so God gave Moses instruction. He spoke to Moses just as God spoke to Jesus, and Jesus said it. You know, I speak that of my Father. You know. So he, I don't, I don't, I don't do what I'm doing. I'm doing what the father is telling me, telling me to do, you know, 
so now the whole purpose of Moses was to bring people, uh, the whole purpose of Moses doing that work of, you know, telling the, you know, leading the people to the promised land was, was for that reason to go from Passover from death to life. They were in Egypt, they were bound because of their sin and their disobedience to the Lord. And so God brought them out and used Moses to do so. That was the Passover. And so um, our end destination now is the same thing, is entering into uh, the holy city, New Jerusalem, you know? And um, um, so again, so let's, let's go to um, John chapter six. This is what I wanted to get to. Um, hold on one second, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up, let me pull it up. Okay. Okay, okay, here we are. So it says, uh, this is chapter um, chapter uh, 6, verse 48, that Jesus says, that I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness. This was during the Passover initially and, and during Moses' time and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Right? Jesus gave his life for the world. You know, it says, then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat, except ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, ye have no life. So if you don't have Jesus' word, if you don't have the truth, you don't have uh, the understanding of the new covenant that he made by his blood, you have no life. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. So if we truly digest and, and take hold and understand Jesus' words and, and what he's done, then we will live because if we have him, then we have life. And uh, this is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. So we shall have eternal life. So that was the question, you know, again, that I, that I asked initially is like, okay, how do, do people know what eternal life is and how to attain that? And that's Jesus just answered that. So um, this is the last, uh, the last three verses. It says, uh, this is chapter uh, verse sixty-two. What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? Is it is the Spirit that quickeneth? The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak un, unto you, they are Spirit and they are life. See, so that's eternal life. We need to really truly eat and receive Jesus' words and and know what God has done through Jesus Christ. And we can have eternal life. Um, and obviously, with that, your life changes. You know, when you really submit to the Lord, as I say many times on here, when you truly submit to the Lord and allow him uh, to be Lord of your life and to really rule over your life, that's when change happens. And that's not to say it's going to be easy because you are going to be tempted. You know, there are going to be times where, you know, you trip up, you know, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. You know, but that's the beautiful thing about it is that, the Lord gives us strength. Jesus gives us strength to get back up and continue again. You know, we have to repent and continue to um, to progress in our walk of faith. Okay. And uh, chapter, uh, verse, chapter 6, verse 65, and this is the book of John, says, And he said, Therefore I say unto you that no man can come unto me except that were given unto him of my father. And, you know, that that's 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 the gist of it right there. And when we when we receive uh, the, when we when we receive who God sends, then then God will accept us. You know, if, if that makes sense. And I, I'm sorry, I wanted I want to read two more passages, and then I'm gonna wrap this up. I don't want this to be too long. Uh, so John chapter six, verse sixty six to sixty no two, yeah sixty six to sixty nine. For that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, this is the twelve disciples, will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's beautiful right there, man. You know, um, 
there's going to be many people that turn away from the Lord. You know, the Bible does speak away, speak about a great falling away. But when you really perceive and understand that the words of Christ is truly life and eternal life, then, you know, we can gravitate to that. And we can, you know, be comfortable with that, be comfortable with being a part of the minority, the minority. And um, know that, you know, that's fine. You know, people walked away from Christ, you know, when he was walking on earth. And that's crazy, right? Because this is the one who was spoken of, who was prophesied of. You know, when God prophesies something, it always comes to pass. And this happened exactly how God said it would. You know, Jesus came exactly how God prophesied through his prophets. Um, and, you know, just to understand and know that this is the one, but there were people that actually went away from that after knowing who he was. But maybe for whatever reason, they felt uncomfortable. Maybe the enemy somehow got in their minds and turned them away. But, you know, we can't be a part of that group. You know, we have to be steadfast. We have to stand firmly on the word. We have to be uh, truly, you know, 10 toes down on what Christ has said. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I remember seeing something a while ago and it said, you know, if if the Bible is true or no, if the Bible is false, then I wasted my life. But if the Bible is true and, and you don't believe in that, then you wasted your eternity. And eternity is such a long time, man. That's forever. <laughs> so to be wrong about something and have to pay the price for that forever, that's horrible. You know, that's something that, you know, is almost like unfathomable. And, um, you know, that's just something that we don't have to experience, you know, as long as we believe in Christ and believe that he is who he says he is. And, you know, in order to be sealed that we need to have him and his words and what he's done, you know, and we need to be harvested from, from that field that I spoke of that, that was, uh, from Matthew chapter 13, um, you know, in order to be harvested, we have to have God's seed. We have to have his word. We have to have the words of Christ. And that is such an important thing, you know, and that's salvation. You know, that's what we're passing over from, from death to life, you know, from, from being in the world or from being in, in, you know, in, inside of a false church or a false, you know, listening to false doctrines, we, we are passing over from that. We need to pass over from that because if you don't, you know, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to endure judgment, you know? And um, that's the thing um, about salvation is that, um, or the end result of the of fulfilling of the promises, especially the promises that are in Revelation, is is one or the other. It's either you receive heaven or you receive judgment, and that is that's it's and this you know what now that I think about it, God makes it so easy to choose, you know. But sometimes we get in we get in our own ways, you know, and and we trip over our own two feet, um, you know. You have two choices. It's not like you got 50 choices, you know, where you're going to choose to go and, and, you know, 10 out of the 50 will are, are, will afford you into heaven. No, it's one way. You know, in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So there's only one way to, to heaven. All these other ways, all these other religions, that is the devil's seed. That leads you to death. Okay. And it's it's really it's really simple. When you, when you really think about it, it's what are you going to choose? And you can't wait until, you know, oh, you know what? I got a little bit more living to do. So you know, when I'm done with that, then I'll choose Christ. You're not promised tomorrow. And I said that before. You're not promised tomorrow. So why not do that today? Today is the day of salvation, you know. And I, I'm going to keep on saying that because it's so true. You know, we need to understand that in order to receive salvation, we need Jesus' blood. We need to eat his body and drink his blood really receive him, receive his words, receive what he's done for us and live with that, you know, and, and, and take heed to that and make that us, you know, we need to live in Christ, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, man, um, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, hopefully you guys made it to the end, you know, um, I think the last two have been a little bit long winded, but it's necessary, man. It's necessary, especially for the times that we're living in. It's absolutely necessary to speak on these topics. So, yeah, man, as always, I, I'm, I'm blessed to be here with you guys and to speak to you guys. You know, God's given me this opportunity to share this with you all. And uh, I'm just so grateful for that. You know, it's really a joy to do this. And um, I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful that you guys listen and that you continue to tune in. So.
Yeah, man. Without further ado, or without further, that's how you start off the episode. Anyways, um, I'm gonna sign off right here, y'all. So y'all be blessed. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the rest of your week, your weekend, all that good stuff. Yo, yo. Yo, yo.